Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. For anyone to study grammatical Arabic, you need to learn first the parts of speech. So whereas in English language, we have eight parts of speech, in Arabic, we only have three. So here I have here, parts of speech are three. That's in Arabic language. And um, in, this, uh, in this book that I wrote here, um, I call this lesson N001. <laughs> Because I'm going to use that to name, to, to um, log them online in a YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. uh, and in Arabic, we say parts of speech is aqsam al kalimati thalatha. Aqsam mean parts, al kalimat, words or speech, thalatha, three. And of course, in Arabic, there's no R. We don't need what we call the helping verb. So this here, aqa. Sa mul ka li ma ti thalathatun. It's actually a sentence. Parts of speech are three. Or the parts of speech are three. And I say here, whereas in there are eight or nine parts of speech in English language, Arabic has only three parts of speech. All words in Arabic must be one of these three. It is absolutely necessary for one to be able to identify these parts of speech to be able to comprehend Arabic grammar. The three parts of speech in Arabic are, and I listed them here in a little chart. Um, so the part of speech is ismun, that's the first, fi'alun, harfun. So ism, if you stop with a sukun and instead of put, pronouncing the tanween, dhamma, instead of saying ismun, we will say ism, or fi'alun, fi'al, harfun, harf. Ism are generally nouns, adverbs, pronouns, and adjectives. These are al asma. Asma is the plural of ism. But we learn that as we go along. Um, the second part of speech is fi'l, which are verbs, whether uh, present, past, or imperative or command. Um, <coughs> harf, prepositions and conjunctions. Or half. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, um, and the rest we'll just figure out them as we go along. Examples of the ism kitabun. Kitabun is an example for al ism. The ism. So we don't say noun. We say ism. So kitab means book. In English, a book is a noun. Book is a noun. Huh? So it falls under, or it's a noun, but it falls under the category of ism. An example of fi'alun is kataba, which means he wrote. Uh, harfun fi. Um, if we were to make a sentence out of this, kataba fi kitabin, that would be a proper Arabic sentence. Huh? So kataba means he wrote, fi means in. Kitabin, we will change it and we dhamma to kasra because of the fi. But that's Arabic grammar. We'll understand the reason why. The lesson you need to take away from this, and we'll do quite a few examples in, in the next pages, is that there are three parts of speech. There's no fourth. In the Arabic language, every word must be either ism, fi'al, or harf. We don't have a fourth. <coughs> ism correspond to nouns, adverbs, pronouns, and adjectives. Fi'al correspond to verbs and harf, prepositions, and conjunctions. Examples, kitab is, kitabun is an example of ism. Kataba is an example of fi'al. And fi is an example of harf. And these are the meaning. Kitab is book. Kataba is he wrote and fi is in. Definition of the ism. So now that we mentioned the part of speech, I'm going to define it and, uh, and then um, give you more examples and uh, ways of um, recognizing uh, the ism. So ta'rifu al-ismi. Ta'ri ful 
is me. Ta'arif mean definition. Al-ism means the ism. Ta'arif ism the definition of the ism. And I didn't translate ism because if I say nouns, then I'm excluding adverbs and I'm excluding adjectives. Are you following me? Mm -hmm. So I say ism. Yeah, <clears throat> the ism. And that's why I put it in a quotation. Here we say ismun, which means a, uh, a ism, and al ism means the ism, the noun, if you wish. The definition, as I wrote it here in Arabic, I'll just read it in Arabic, even though you won't remember this, it familiarizes you with Arabic. Uh, definition of ism, it is a word that has a meaning of its own, but it is not associated with time. Now, what does that mean? When we say book, book has a meaning of its own. It, it, it defines that it's this, these pages with the paper, but it has nothing to do with past, present, and future. So in our definition of al-ism, we say it is something that has a meaning of its own. It carries a meaning, it identifies an object but it's disconnected from time. Whereas verbs, we'll see, have a time in the definition. Yeah. Al or amthilatun examples. Amthilatun. As I'm reading the Arabic, uh, you notice I'm reading it kind of um, slowly. <laughs> now you may have to go over uh, this lesson a few times to grasp because I'm giving you a lot and I'm reading um, a lot of Arabic. Uh, but you can take your time and um, go over it as many times as you need. Am si la tun. We would say am si la, which means examples. So I give here four examples. Zaidun. And I, in this book that I wrote, I, I try to get all my examples from the Quran. Because my intention of this book was to teach a person Arabic so he can understand Quran. That's why I'm using examples from the Quran so that uh, yeah he would be learning the quran or she would be learning the quran the student would be learning the quran at the same time zaidun zaidun in arabic means zaid it's a name falamma qada zaidun excuse me minha wataran zawajna kaha excuse me and when zaid was done with her we married you to her. So this is speaking about a specific uh, story. Waladun. Waladun is ism. فَإِن لَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ وَلَدٌ وَوَرِثَهُ أَبَوَاهُ فَلِأُمِّهِ الثُّلُثُ Or a thuluth. If you stop, remember, we will always imagine there is a sukun. And if he does not have a child, and his parents inherit from him, his mother will get or shall get one third. This is talking in the context of inheritance. <clears throat> Samarun. Wakan alahu Samarun and he had fruits. This is actually part of a story about two men. One of them was wealthy and one was not. This is in Surah Al Kah. Shajaratan wa shajaratan tahruju min turi sainaa and a tree that grows from the mountain of Saina. Shajaratan. How do we um, identify the ism in these examples? It's because of the tanween. Number one, this is a name and it has the tanween dhamma. Tanween dhamma, two dhamma. Tanween dhamma, tanween fatha. Anytime you see a word with tanween, that's a clear example that it's, uh, or a clear, excuse me, sign that it's ism. There are more signs, but we will deal with them later. The definition of the fi'al, the definition of the verb. Now we can say al-fi'alu is verb because it only is verbs. هو ما دل على معنى في نفسه والزمن جزء من أو والزمن جزء من Would probably be a better grammar.
this is a grammar mistake here it's kind of funny you're teaching grammar هو ما دل على معنى في نفسه وزمن جزء منه so the definition of al fi'lu the verb it is a word that has a meaning of its own and is associated with time time is a part of it amthila examples an'amta this is surah al fatiha which is the first chapter of quran sirat al ladina an'amta alayhim the path of those you have blessed um, we recognize it as a verb because of that ta or it's a fail na'budu iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'in so we have two here actually i just used one from the verse na'budu which means we worship iyyaka na'budu you alone we worship wa iyyaka nasta'in and you alone we ask for help so both na'budu and nasta'in are examples of al fi'lu ihdi guide that's an imperative so this is past tense present tense and this is the imperative ihdina as-sirat al-mustaqim guide us to and along the straight path guide is a we say command but really because it's addressed to god we don't command him it's we call it dua it's a supplication <laughs> yeah. from but from a linguistic perspective it's the command or imperative form of the verb so that's it those are examples of al fi'lu the third is al harf huwa ma dalla ala ma'na ghayr mustaqil bil fahmi so this is something that has no meaning of its own it has to be associated with something else the harf uh, for example um, if i were to say amthilatun examples b b linguistically means in or with bismillah in the name of allah if i say in it tells you nothing if i say li for which is a preposition so here we have with or in or li those are prepositions harf or huruf but they don't have no meaning on their own when i say book that that carries a meaning when i say he wrote that carries a meaning but in or with or on or to or from these things have no meaning on their own so that's the harf so what you need to remember from this let me just summarize these pages here that parts the parts of speech in Arabic are three Aqsamul Kalimati Thalatha parts of speech are three namely they are the ism or al ismu fi'lun or al fi'lu harfun or al or harful that's all you have to remember al ismu al fi'lu and al harf why is that important and these are the definition and some examples that's all you need to really carry away from that Here I went through a lot of details now identifying the ism. So whereas I give you brief examples here, now I'll have for the for identifying the ism we have four identifications. For identifying the verbs we have here four, and for identifying the harf, um, I said whatever is remaining. <laughs> <laughs> so if you were to look at a sentence, right, in Arabic. And you see any of these four identi identifications, you you identify the word as as ism. If if you don't see those fours, and but you see any of these four, then you identify it as a verb. And if you don't see any of those eight, then you say it's an it's mm -hmm. half. Okay. <laughs> Are you following me? Mm -hmm. So let's take uh, examples of uh, this is alamatul ismi. Now. Before I continue, I just want you to understand the importance of this lesson. This lesson is at the very foundation of studying Arabic grammar. You must understand words and what category of word it is. Is it an ism? Is it a fi'l or is it a haf? This is absolutely essential you understand that. Because the question that you ask me 
um, uh, is uh, how do you make sentences? Well, you cannot understand how to make sentences until you know the parts of speech. Huh? Because mm -hmm. we have generally in Arabic two kinds of sentence, and it, it's based on the parts of speech. Uh, which part of the speech is, <laughs> or parts of speech is in the sentence? So let's look at the four signs of a listen. Are you following? Yes. This is not too much, right? No. Okay, great. If you want me to slow down or you want me to explain something further additional, feel free to ask. So this lesson is a few identifications of the ism. Alamatul ismi. This is pronounced a la ma tu, which means signs or identifications. Al ismi. But because of a little technicality, we don't pronounce the lamb in the al. We say alamatu lismi. The, originally, this hamza that you see here is supposed to have the kasra, but the lamb stole it. Don't worry about it. Alamatu lismi. Uh, <coughs> signs or a few identifications of the ism. Number one, al jar. Number two, a tanween. Number three, alif and lamb, the definite article. Number four, and nida. So we're going to just learn these three, uh, uh, excuse me, these four identifications. What does it mean, jar? <coughs> so one of the lessons we will study in the future is the states of the words. So in Arabic, in Arabic language, the ending of the words have vowels. For example, if I were to say to you, kitabun, there are sometimes I would say, kitabin. Sometimes I'll say, kitaban. So I'll have, dhamma kasra fatha. Or, al kitabu, with one dhamma instead of two. Or, al kitabi, with one kasra instead of two. And, al kitaba, with one fatha instead of two. What makes the difference? Grammar. Grammar rules. When we change the vowels, it's because of grammar rules. The word is in a state. So for simplicity, technically what I'm going to tell you now is not correct, but you have to start here. And later on you'll see, you'll get the technicalities. Huh? So I'm, I'm oversimplifying it in this lesson here for you to start with this and understand, and then we'll explain more further. I don't want to give you too much now. Al-Jar, uh, most of the time, much of the time, it means the last letter has kasra. Like the word, lillahi. The word is originally, so if I were to just write in the word here, what it is originally, right? Allahu. We would normally put a dhamma at the ending of the word Allah. Huh? But uh, because of... Because of this lamb in front here, which is a preposition, harf, li means two, we change the dhamma at the ending of the ha to a kasra. See that? So this was originally Allahu. But because of that lamb there, we had to put a kasra. See that? Why is that the case? Grammar rules. So we say that that's in a state of jar. For all practical purposes, jar here mean that it, that it has a kasra. It means more than that. But for now, that's enough to start with. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> huh? So in your mind, when I say something is in a state of jar, to be in a state of J-A-R-R, -R, jar, you just imagine it means it has a kasra in the ending instead of dhamma or fatha. Huh? Um, the word rob also so when you see the kasra there, that's a sign. When you see this kasra here, Rabbi, that's a sign. And this one, it's in a state of jar, but because it has a ya. And that's complex, don't worry about it now. And I'll remove this word Allah for now. So if a word is in a state of jar, that's a big giveaway that it's an ism. Because only the ism will ever be in a state of jar. We have four states, and we will learn those later. Yeah, but states like states of words, not like New York or South Carolina. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> 
the words are, have four states in Arabic language. I'll just list name them for you. We call them al rafu Al-Jarru, Al-Nasbu, and Al-Jazmu. So a word would have one of these states. Or actually, another is called Al-Bina. Al-Bina. It's kind of complicated. I'm putting too much out there. But they would, it would be clarified in further lessons. Al-Bina means the word is fixed. It doesn't change at the end. So words in Arabic language are either fixed, they're built like that, they don't change, they're always the same, or it changes. So we say, Al-Ismu minhu ma'arabun wa mabni. The ism can either be ma'arab, it's fixed, or it can be mabni. Mabni means it changes. Uh, excuse me, ma'arab means it changes, mabni means it's fixed. I, I had that uh, flipped. Um, Al-Ismu minhu ma'arabun, meaning it changed, wa mabni means fixed. Anyway, uh, ignore all the stuff that are details in between. They don't make a lot of sense now, but you'll pick them up as time progresses. So for now, the word, when, we, when a word is in a state of jar, it's a sign that it's ism. We will understand more about jar later when we study the states of words. Tanween. If a word has tanween, dhamma, or kasra, or fatha, it's another sign that is ism. See that? At tanweenu. Only the ism has tanween. Like, the, like in the verse that says, Tilka asharatun kamilatun. Asharatun kamilatun. That's a big giveaway. Both ashara and kamila are ism. Number three. If it has the word, if it has the word alif and lam or the definite article in front of it at the starting, it means a za. So the whatever comes after it is an ism. Because you wouldn't say the kick. The kicked. <laughs> yeah. For example. We have alif and lam here. It means the word as is ism. Because we see the alif and lam. See that? Al kitabu, al qalamu, al maktabu. Ad darsu anything that has alif and lam at the starting, which means the, which you'll study later. You haven't studied that yet, right? Have you? Me, I have. You have. Okay, great. Then that means that that word is ism. Also, if you address it and nida to address someone or call someone. So if you put the word ya, which means to call. If I say ya Muhammad, ya Adam, like the verse says. قَالَ يَا آدَمُ أَنْبِئْهُمْ بِأَسْمَائِهِمْ He said, this is God said, O Adam, inform them, that's the angels, بِأَسْمَائِهِمْ, the names of these things. So this, this is a story in the Quran in which uh, God was trying to teach the angels that Adam has the ability to learn. This is before he, he uh, before, when he created Adam, uh, when he informed the angels he'll create Adam, the angels objected. And, uh, well, not objected, they voiced their concerns. And um, God told them he knew what they don't know. And he taught Adam. <laughs> yeah. God taught Adam. And God wanted to demonstrate to them that Adam has the capacity to learn. Which makes us special. The thing that makes us human being special is our capacity to learn. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so going over these four signs or identifications of al-ism, al-jar, if the word is in a state of jar, that means it's ism, because only the ism can be majur. If it has tanween at the ending, whether fatha, kasra, or dhamma, if it has alif and lam, like al, and if you call. So the word Adam is ism. Why? Because we said ya in front of it. We called Adam. Ya Adam. Yeah. How do we identify the verbs? Signs of the verbs. A few identifications of the verbs. Uh, number one would be So I wrote the rules in Arabic because I figure that people who know a little more will learn a little more. But I also translate. Huh? 
that when you place the open tear at the end, it's called the feminine tear. I'll, I'll, ex, I'll explain to you. For example, I give examples. The word to make the word feminine is a sign that it is a verb. Oh, placing an open, I'm supposed to read from here. Placing the open ta at the end of the word to make the word feminine is a sign that it is a verb. So in fatara means to split. In fatarat, the fact that it has a ta there, that only goes at the ending of a verb. So we know in fatarat is a verb. In tatharat is a verb. Fujirat, it's a verb. Ba'thirat is a verb. Qaddamat, it's a verb. Akharat is a verb. Qalat, darasat, jalasat. Namat, takalamat. When you have that open ta at the ending, it's, it, it makes the verb feminine. So when you see that, we know that's a verb. Yeah. So that's one sign you can tell a word is a verb. So to read these verses, these verses are from Surah to Takwir. Uh, sorry, Al Infitar. Ida Sama un Fatarat, and when the sky splits, Wa Ida al Kawe Kibun Tatharat, and when the planets are extinguished, Wa Ida or actually uh, ended, or the, the terms are ended, when when they fall apart, in Tatharat. Yeah, I mean a Nathri. When they fall apart, Wa Ida al Biharu Fujirat, and when the seas uh, boil or are lit, وَإِذَا الْقُبُورُ بُعْثِرَتْ And when the graves are, uh, are opened up or things are spilled out. عَلِمَتْ نَفْسٌ مَا قَدَّمَتْ وَأَخَّرَتْ Everyone shall know what they sent forth and what they left behind. So this is describing uh, the end times in the Qur'an. So to go over that, the first or one of the first signs that a word is a verb is if it has the open ta the ending. Like in fatarat, in tatharat, fujirat, bu'thirat, qaddamat, akharat. Those are examples. If you dukhulu qad alay, if you put the word qad, placing qad in front of a word is a sign that it's a verb. Qad is used to emphasize a past tense verb. Huh? Or it's also used in front of present tense verb for a different meaning. But when you see the word qad, which means uh, indeed, that you're emphasizing something really happened. For example, qad sami allahu qawla allati tujadilu ka fi zawjiha. Qad sami Allah, Allah has heard. Sami, we know sami is a verb. How did we know? Because the word qad is in front of it. So whereas we know this is a verb because the ta is at the ending, mm -hmm. we know this is a verb because qad is in front of it. Because qad is not going to be placed in front of an ism. It's going to only be placed in front of a verb. So we know sami'a, which means he heard. Now you can tell from the meaning too. But we are looking at visual identifications. Qad sami'a Allahu, Allah has heard. Qawla allati tujadilu ka fi zawjiha. The words of the one who argues with you or disputes with you concerning her husband. This is a story that happened in the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and the Quran is talking about it. It has uh, jurisprudent, jurisprudent uh, ramifications, but it's not necessary right now. Dukhul sina alayhi. Putting the scene, placing the scene in front of the word is a sign that the word is a verb. Sa, the sin sa means uh, shall or will. Hmm? For example, kalla sa ya'lamun. So ya'lamun is a verb. How did we know? Because the scene was put in front of it, which means will. Sa ya'lamun, they will know. See that? Thumma kalla sa ya'lamun is the same word. So because of the sa, the scene being put in front of it, we know that ya'lamun is a verb. Dukhulu sawfa. The same thing. If we were to put sawfa, which means the same thing as the scene, by the way. Placing sawfa in the front of the word is a sign that it is a verb. Dukhulu sawfa. 
نحو كلا سوف تعلمون ثم كلا سوف تعلمون سوف is there therefore we know تعلمون is a verb same thing here سوف is here so we know تعلمون is a verb تعلمون mean you know سوف تعلمون you will know yeah so here we have four signs the open تا at the ending قد in front سا in front and سوف in front are four signs that those words are verbs الفعل are you following me? Mm -hmm. yes. so now we have four signs of a word being اسم الجر if it has كسرة the ending تنوين تو ضمة تو كسرة تو فتحة if it has ال at the starting or if you call the word يا آدم those are four signs of اسم here we have four signs of فعل verb if it has the open تا as قد as the scene at the starting or سوف Okay, the third part of speech, علامات uh, A few identifications of the harf. Uh, easy. كل ما ليس باسم ولا فعل فهو حرف. Everything that's not an ism or a fi'l, it's a harf. So if you were to have a sentence, right, and we were to uh, uh, identify all the ism and all the fa'l. Then what's left is harf. <laughs> it's kind of like that, yeah. And I give a few uh, examples. Amthila, harf al This is the conjunction. Harf al mean the word that joins. Conjunction. Iyaka na'abudu wa iyaka nasta'in. You, we worship, and you, we ask for help. And is a conjunction. It's harf. حرف الجر the preposition على حرف الجر في and حرف الجر من so I give you على في and من these are three examples صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم the path of those you favored literally in Arabic on them but in English we wouldn't use the on we would say favored them ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه that book there is no doubt in it وَمِمَّا رَزَقْوَنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ And from what we have provided them, they spend. مِمَّا is originally مِنَّا وَمَا أُنزِلَ مِنْ قَبِلِكَ And what was sent now before you. مِنْ is, is حَرْفُ جَرْ So we have وَ We have عَلَى We have فِي And we have مِنْ Those are examples. So now uh, we have identified uh, the three parts of speech let me summarize this real quickly as we scroll through there are three parts of speech every word in in Arabic must be ism fi'al or harf um, the definition of the ism is a word that has a meaning of its own time is not a part of it example zaid walad thamar shajar shajara uh, the ism the definition is uh, what has a meaning and time is a part of it and amta you blessed you you we worship we ask for help ihdina guide us um, the harf it is, it is a word that doesn't have a meaning of its own um, it needs to be connected like for example with or in be li for um, four identifications of the ism if it's in a state of jar lillahi it has a kasra tanween asharatun has al as salah and nida if it's called ya adam anything else or oh, a few identifications of the uh, verb in fatarat the open ta qad is in front Sa is in front or Sawfa is in front. Signs of the ism, um, everything else that is not, uh, sorry, harf, signs of the harf, everything that is not ism or fa'al is harf. For example, wa, ala, fi, and min. The next uh, lesson is al mu'arabu wal mabini, fixed and changeable words. Now I know this is not. Uh, 
what you ask. So for you to be able to form sentences, you have to learn the parts of speech. And then you have to learn al-mu'arabu uh, al-mabni, fixed and changeable words. Once we have learned that, I'll, I'll record this lesson. Halatul uh, the four states of words. We will study the four states of words. Uh, it's kind of lengthy. Al-Nakiratu al ma'arifa. Then we'll have to learn the, how to make a word definite, definite article. Sun and moon letters, yikes. There's a bunch of lessons in front of your question. Al-Dhamiru, pronouns. Ismul Ishara, the the demonstrative pronouns, proper nouns, mm -hmm. relative pronouns. Idafa, al idafa ila ma'arifa anna kitara luqtu bindi dea. Al idafa, al tawaira wa al-arba furfa. Yikes. Where am I starting making sentences? <laughs> Let me pause. I guess we'll come to that. Maybe I'll jump forward for you. Al-Badal. Al-Jumla tul ismiya wa al-Jumla tul fi'aliya. So, N16. So, chapter 16, which is page 35, is um, the question you asked. So, we have 34 pages that precedes this. <laughs> but what I can do, I can jump ahead just for you and record this lesson. And then we can go back and... Um, and uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be in order. It would be nice for you to know the parts of speech at least that we did. Sure. And then we can do this. So let me stop here, upload this, and then we'll record this.